My name is Liz Kanner and I'm a director and producer from the United States and I have a documentary showing at IDFA called Orgasm Inc. Um, I started making Orgasm Inc. about nine years ago um, when after a decade of making documentaries on human rights issues such as police brutality and genocide and globalization, I was starting to get really depressed about the human condition and I started to have nightmares ab about people being beaten by police officers and that kind of thing. So I decided that I had to start um, making a new project that would be on something pleasant uh, to sort of take a break. And I thought, well, why not do something on what science says about women and pleasure and the history of that? And so I started doing research on this and started shooting an experimental documentary on the topic. And then out of the blue, I was offered a job by a pharmaceutical company that was developing an orgasm cream for women. And I thought, well, this will give me a contemporary look at what, women, what science is saying and medicine is saying about women and pleasure. So I took the job and I gained permission to film the company. And while I was working there, um, I learned about a new disease called female sexual dysfunction. And I had been doing all this research about women and, and medicine and pleasure, and never had I come across the term female sexual dysfunction. And this made me really curious. Where had this term come from? And then when I learned that 43% of women suffered from this disease, this made me even more curious. Because why had I not heard about this? If my mother must suffer from it, my friends must suffer from it, I might have it. So this sent me on a, a, this nine-year journey to, and where I followed the pharmaceutical industry as they tried to develop these drugs and also as they tried to develop the disease female sexual dysfunction, which turned out to be something that the, med that the drug industry had a lot of influence on. Uh, in terms of the creation of, of the actual disorder. What I learned in making my documentary was that in the late 90s, when Viagra came out, it was a huge blockbuster for Pfizer. And they and a number of other drug companies who had been working on similar erectile dysfunction drugs for men turned to women and said, there's a much bigger market here than there is for Viagra. And so the problem was that they needed to have a disease in order to start developing a drug for women. So Pfizer and the drug company that I worked for and a number of other drug companies started funding conferences and handpicking, initially handpicking the doctors who were there. And so the actual definition, female sexual dysfunction, was uh, created by 19 doctors. 18 of them had financial ties to 22 drug companies. Um, and the definition is extremely broad, so that basically any sexual complaint that you might have falls into this category. If you have trouble lubricating, if you have pain during intercourse, if you don't feel you have enough desire, if you have orgasm problems. And orgasm problems are very generally described. Um, and what I found was that women are not very well, well educated around sex. And so it leaves um, us very open to being exploited by this, this disease category. I found that many women don't know where their clitoris is. I found that many women don't know that 70% of women need direct clitoral stimulation in order to have an orgasm during intercourse. Um, and I found that there was just a lot of misunderstandings about sexuality. Uh, and, and I do want to be very clear because there is a very small percentage of women that actually do suffer from sexual uh, problems that stem from physiological, uh, biological issues. Um, if you've had a hysterectomy, that can affect your uh, desire. Um, if you've been sexually abused, that can cause a lot of sexual problems. Um, you know, so there's a, there's a large group of things that can cause sexual problems. Um, the other thing is that if you're taking uh, antidepressants, that can lower uh, libido and cause orgasmic problems. So there, there's a, there, but that's a very, very small percentage of women, not this 43% that the pharmaceutical industry and the media have been um, propagating, basically, as, as the number of women that have this disorder. And that term turns out to have come from a sociological study that was done by a sociologist in the early 90s who was looking at women's sexual 
complaints, everything from having orgasms too quickly to not having enough orgasms um, to having uh, being sleepy during sex. I mean, the, the, the range of, of actual uh, complaints was huge and had nothing to do with the disease at all.